Hello everyone and welcome to the analysis of the third Dev Diary for Jurassic World Evolution 2. And it's only appropriate that, to start with, I sum it up in three words. Wow. 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 I'm so excited about this game and this was the perfect Dev Diary to ramp that up. It wasn't new information from start to finish, but we saw some new species, we finally saw the Spinosaurus, and we got a look at just how huge some of the maps are going to be. Jurassic World Evolution 2 launches in less than two weeks, so if you want to see all the content and help this channel get to the ultimate funny number of 69k subscribers, consider subscribing. In this video, I'm just going to highlight the new and exciting information to make it as snappy as possible. Let's start with the maps, because that is going to be the foundation of our dream parks, and they finally gave us a big playground to play around with. It seems like everything we see in this shot will eventually be buildable area. We had already found out that the maps are indeed expandable and it appears that the map that is currently built only has unlocked that first part of the map. But there are no natural barriers to stand in the way of us reaching all the way to the back to build a truly sprawling park. It's almost too good to believe, it's almost too good to be true. I, I kind of want to err on the side of caution and say that maybe, maybe? we only get to build up until the water inlets, but even then it's massive. I'm absolutely blown away by this and beyond the size, it's just a beautiful map too. Finally, we are getting rid of those mountain ranges that, to be honest, started to feel a little claustrophobic after a couple of maps and a thousand hours. <laughs> God, this just makes me so, so happy to see and I cannot wait to see all the other maps. One thing that concerned me was in the video itself, they mentioned that when you're building in Sandbox, you have to choose between Jurassic Park or Jurassic World era. And I panicked a little bit because they had previously said mixed eras would be possible. Thankfully, they didn't backtrack on that. The forum article that accompanies the Dev Diary specifies exactly what we already knew, that PC and new generation console players can mix the eras. They can build a park with both Jurassic Park and Jurassic World assets. Only if you're on an older generation console do you have to choose. Obviously, that's just a limitation of the older console. So if you're lucky enough to have a PC or a new console, you won't have to start every single park build with Sophie's Choice. We'll be building parks all over the world. And as many of my Discord spies happily pointed out to me, Germany is one of the new confirmed locations. I think a German map probably means no Dutch map, but who am I kidding? It's not like we have the space for a dinosaur park here anyway. Aside from new locations, we're also returning to Isla Nublar and Isla Sorna, as is Camp Cretaceous, by the way, just confirmed. And in these tropical locations, we'll actually be facing both hurricanes and tornadoes, which is different from what they said in the feature focus article, which made it seem like tornadoes were exclusive to temperate maps and only hurricanes would strike our tropical parks. Now let's talk about the dinosaurs because you know, those are kind of important. We finally get our first look at the Spinosaurus and as soon as this shot happened, I said out loud, I found my thumbnail. I hate myself. Just like all the other dinosaurs, the Spinosaurus looks fantastic after her glow up. The improved skin textures just make her look so much more realistic. All she really does is walk by a viewing gallery and make this lovely woman crap her pants. Allegedly. So there's not much to discuss here. I do find it interesting that the exhibit, as far as we can see, is purely grassland. So does that mean that the Spinosaurus wetland requirement is not making a return? I guess you could say maybe the exhibit is just big enough that the wetland area is elsewhere, but given how the territory system works, that wouldn't make much sense because why would she be wandering over to a part of the enclosure that doesn't fulfill her needs? That feels a little masochistic, so I don't know, just, just a little curiosity, something to discover as we play the game in less than two weeks. I do still hope that we get a Spinosaurus species field guide next week and see some sort of mind-blowing animation that is going to push the hype over the edge. The only new species making an appearance is this flying reptile, which I'm assuming in all of my brilliant inexperience is a Topiara? Topiara? I'm probably wrong because when am I not? And even when I'm right, I'm probably mispronouncing it. So. 
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> new flying reptile. Excitement. It looks really good too. Other than that, we got a better look at some of the dinosaurs we did already know would be in the game. Like Chasmosaurus, Gigantspinosaurus, Diplodocus and the Indominus Rex. All looking lovely. The Chasmo and Gigant look a bit... small? I'm struggling to remember their size from the first game, honestly. I mean, they're dinosaurs. They're big. But they do look smaller and I'm getting a lot of messages on Discord <laughs> saying the same thing. So I don't know, confirm or deny in the comments down below. But I do think they are indeed smaller. So maybe they're going for a little bit more realistic sizing. Uh, I do think it's nice that, you know, realistic sizing could open up an avenue for more variation in size. You know, let's not make everything huge. You know, maps should be huge. Not every single dinosaur needs to be huge. Rexy in her 1993 skin looks brilliant, ready for a night out on the town. And we see a raptor perched on top of a fence and jump down as the narration covers the dangers of power outages. We knew from last week that small theropods will be able to escape by climbing non-electric fences. On one hand, a bit of a shame that we didn't get to see that, the climbing itself from a content creator perspective. On the other hand, I'm just looking forward to seeing it for the first time in game. Overall, I just really, really cannot overstate that the game as a whole looks beautiful. I just want to jump into this game so badly and never come out. Like, Jumanji. <laughs> the Dev Diary and Forum article also talked a little bit about genetic modification, park teams, scientist management, and the aviaries, but nothing that hadn't been discussed in past forum articles. It was more like a, like a highlight reel to remind us of all the reasons to be excited about this game. As if we needed reminding, my head is literally exploding right now. I'm smiling so much. I'm, oh my God, I'm gonna be, I took the week off from my actual work <laughs> to play this game and I don't think I'm gonna get a lot of sleep at all. Oh my god, it's gonna be amazing. Here is a little reminder to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content and if you want to see more. And leave a comment down below if you feel like I skipped over something important, something that is just really putting the coal in your hype locomotive. I don't know where that came. That, that one wasn't scripted. That one just came out and I don't know why. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the anticipation. Mm -hmm.